Hi, my name is Jack Owens, and for my sequel from scratch project, I did a Warby Parker style quiz. And I got to analyze some purchase data and A-B testing. I uh, looked at the quiz funnel, did some question completion percentages, and really analyzed the overall effectiveness of Warby Parker's marketing. Uh, so I'm gonna dive into that more in a second. So we started off here with a query trying to get a feel for the table, particularly the survey table, and we wanted to see what questions are being asked in the style quiz. So we did a select star from survey limit 10, and we found some of the questions are, what are you looking for? What's your fit? Which shapes do you like? Which colors do you like? And when was your last eye exam? And we also got an idea for some of the user IDs and some of the responses, like, women's styles. For uh, then we also wanted to look at where people are really giving up in the survey. What what question is is stopping them from continuing? And uh, to find that out, we wrote a new query. We were selecting the question, the specific question that users were giving up at, and we wanted to count the number of users that gave up at that particular question. So inside that select query, we had question, comma, count distinct user ID from survey, grouped it by question so that we can see what question on the left-hand side of the table and the number on the right. So we see 500 people uh, answered, what are you looking for? 475 answered their fit. 380 answered what shapes they like. 361 answered what colors, and 270 answered when their last eye exam was. So, see the numbers dwindling, people aren't completely completing the survey. Moving on, we wanted to get some percentages on who was answering every question. We had 100% for question 1, 95 for question 2, 76 for 3, 72 and 54. In general, I found question 5 to be the, the least answered because it suffered from those who didn't finish questions 3 and questions 4. And I don't think a lot of people know when they had their last eye exam, especially those who may be new to the glasses purchasing community. Uh, I also thought question three and question four were a little less uh, concrete in their possible answers than, say, what's your fit? And, and uh, from there, we wanted to get to know the different tables a little more. And we really got into the purchase funnel here by selecting five items from different tables. And so we selected from the quiz table, and we found that the items in this table were user ID, style, fit, shape, and color, a home try-on, which was a, a segment of the Warby Parker, Parker population who got to try on glasses at home, uh, that had a user ID tag, number of pairs, and address, and then the purchase table, which contained user ID, product ID, style, model name, and color, as well as price. For our A-B test, we want to join the three tables, the quiz table, home try-on, and purchase. So we're going to select distinct Q for quiz, user ID, H for home try-on, user ID. We want to make sure those aren't null so that when we're getting our A-B test back, we can see really who actually purchased a pair of glasses from the people who got to try on three at home, who purchased from who got to try on five at home, and did anybody purchase that didn't get to try on anything at home? Uh, we want to set the limit to 10 because this is going to be a big table, might slow things down, but we're left joining on home try on table, H for home try on, Q for quiz. We're joining it to quiz, and we left join purchase as well on the P for purchase user ID, Q for quiz user ID, and get that information. We see that it doesn't look like uh, anybody who didn't get to try on glasses at home purchased a pair of glasses. It's a little bit of a small sample size. We see there were a couple of three pairs that purchased and five pairs, but it doesn't look like anybody who didn't get to try it on at home made a purchase. Uh, we have some three pair purchases and five pair purchases, so I wanted to make a larger sample size query and uh, really just extend that limit out to 30 and I ultimately found that 14 uh, out of 30 home try-on individuals actually purchased a pair of glasses 
or 46 percent and of the 14 who purchased glasses 11 of them received five pairs for the home try-on so it does look like five pairs is the way to go for the home try-on i also want to see what other factors were involved in making purchase decisions what else increased purchase so i modified my new query um, instead of not just selecting the user id table columns from uh, the different tables from home try-on and from number of pairs uh, i wanted to look at uh, not a model name color price as well to see if this was a factor in making purchase decisions. So when we build this table out, we see that uh, Eugene Nero is actually one of the more frequent models that was purchased, and $95 seems to be a common price. So we'll wrap things up with our actionable insights that we have for Warby Parker. I think we should continue the home try-on method. Its purchase success rate is high. Eugene Nero is one of the more popular models when I Builds it out to a 30-person sample size. Three out of the seven purchases were Eugene Nero. Um, Five-pair try-on is responsible for 79, almost 79% of home try-on purchases. 95 purchase price is a good price as well. So these are some things that, uh, based on the data that we were able to join um, different tables, uh, these appear to be the most successful uh, products and prices and methods. So thank you, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation.